The first app you should know about is researcher-app.com. Now, this is about making sure you can keep up to date with the literature. It is a nightmare keeping on top of the new discoveries in your field. So this app allows you to find published papers quicker than ever. So if I log in at the top here, you can see that you go through all of the normal sort of stuff. But the one thing that I like about it is you get this onboarding. So let's just say I'm an academic. I'm a postdoc and I wanna look for chemistry and material science because that's where I was. And let's say that I wanna look at physical chemistry, chemical physics, material science, blah, blah, blah. You go through and you can click on these. You can also search for topics and then we can select publications that I wanna follow. Let's just select all of theirs. And yes, that's what I wanna do complete. So they're getting me onboarded. And the one thing you'll see is it'll end up with feeds. All of these feeds are the papers that you should know about, but you can go up here to manage feeds and then create a new feed and then look for any keyword or topic, which is probably the best way I would use this. Or you can add an author. If there's a prolific author that you know is published a lot you can follow them here so I want to find transparent electrodes you can also exclude stuff which is important if you're finding you're getting overwhelmed with rubbish I love this so it's a great way of keeping on top of the literature and it does most of the hard work for you once you've got it set up you can have multiple feeds and I think every researcher should know about this website do you ever get stuck trying to work out what the best way is to solve a problem. Well, untools.co, the problem solving stuff, the tools for better thinking can help you. I know that your PhD and your research can only be as good as you are at thinking. This can help you. So all systems thinking, decision making, problem solving and communication, these are things that can really help you just sort of like get over those cognitive humps, humps that you face. So let's have a look. I want to have a look at problem solving and let's find the root of all problems. So how to use it. It's got examples and it's got everything you need to know about using this tool. So overall, if you find yourself stuck in, in a bit of a rut or you don't know what to do next, check out Untools for making better decisions. I think it could be really helpful, particularly for PhD students in the early stage of their research where they just don't know what to do, where to start. Here are some models that you can use to guide your thoughts and thinking. Flourish Studio is all about data and storytelling. So here it is, beautiful and easy data visualization and storytelling. You can use it to produce a loads of engaging graphs. So let's have a look at some examples. You can have a look at these racing type of bar graphs. You can see these have become really popular online. One thing that I really like, for example, is survey data in particular. This makes any data super uh, engaging, super interactive. And so here we can just click through and you can see it sort of like groups these different tragic figures behind movie set accidents into different bubbles and diagrams and it's just such a great way to have a look at different data. So if you're doing a lot of survey data, this could be a really nice way to present that data online in your presentations or just to send it to the people that need to know about this data. Animated 3D maps where you can zoom in and it's got all sorts of different, here we are, earthquakes and stuff, I love that. You can plot the points anywhere and you can turn it into heat maps and all that sort of stuff. So overall, flourish if you're not sure what to do with data, plug it in and have a look to see what sort of graphs you can actually use. I love it that you can go in and find all of the different types of bar charts and different data representations. It's gonna help you produce graphs quicker and more efficiently. So check out flourish.studio. Bibliographies can be a bit of a pain in the ass to create, especially if you're writing papers for different publications. My bib takes a lot of the guesswork out of that for you. So you can add references from websites to books to journals, just put the title or the DOI in there, video and more. You can see there's loads of different types of references you can put in there. And the one thing that I love about this is once you've got your references in, you can actually look for a load of different type of journals. Now, I have been through this and I couldn't find a journal that I didn't use. And that's a good thing, double negative. So this could be very useful for you if you are submitting a paper to different journals after they've been rejected and you just need to sort of like reformat the style. You can also import from RIS files and bib text files, which means that it's compatible with most bibliography management systems. 
Another one you should know about is paperity.com. That is open science aggregated. So it is the first multidisciplinary aggregator of open access journals and papers. This is important to include in your workflow when you are looking for papers. When I was a postdoc, I would have sort of like once a month, a thing that I just go through um, like a flow diagram and say, I need to check on this place, this place, this place, and this place. I knew that I would have to hit up certain places and this would be included because it accesses all of the open access journals that I was interested in. So once a month, at least, you need to go and check on different resources to see where papers are being published just to make sure you haven't missed out. Another really important tool that you should be using is paperpal.com. Paperpal here has got a really kind of like generous free plan. I've uploaded one of my old papers that was submitted and accepted, but you can see that what it does is have a look for issues with the text. Even in the first sentence, it's picked up that it can be made a little bit better. It's got tense usage, which was always a little bit of a sort of uh, uh, Achilles heel for me. But you can see that I've put produced instead of produce. So overall, these are the things that are gonna make a reviewer feel comfortable about accepting your work. You have to make sure that the reviewer sees um, what you are capable of doing and not just all of the different annoying grammatical errors or tense uh, issues that was a particular weakness of mine, you need to fill them with confidence that you know what you're talking about and running your paper through something like PaperPal can really help fine tune it to give the reviewers the confidence they need to say accept. Now I've talked about this one in the past, but this is one that I really, really like, and that's BioRendit. The one thing I love about it is it just takes all of the hassle out of creating scientific diagrams, particularly useful for the biological science where there's lots of really complicated schematics, but I wish this was around when I was writing my thesis. Here's a schematic of energy levels that I did that took me ages in PowerPoint. Here's a schematic of the nanoparticle formation using schematics that I did. BioRender would have made all of these much easier. I am very proud of this though, it took me bloody ages. Mwah, I love it. Chemistry, here we are, we've got loads of structural formulas for chemistry. I would have killed to have to not create another benzene ring in my life using whatever I could, uh, PowerPoint, Word, or otherwise. So here you can see you've got benzene. Um, we've also got a load of different molecules. We've got the different uh, chair and boat forms of benzene, um, and then also for brushes. The one thing I love about this is you have these brushes that allow you to create, you know, a bilayer, for example, if you're doing something with cells or um, my cells. In my case, I was using surfactants to create a solar ink. So here, all of the grunt work is done for you. Um, you can also add in line shapes. One thing I like about it is these custom shapes that you can create any custom shape you want just by dragging and moving and doing all sorts of stuff. So overall, this is a fantastic way of creating really professional looking schematics and diagrams without the hassle of having to go through Word like I did in the past or any other image manipulation software really worth its weight in gold and that's BioRender. Check it out if you're just fed up of creating schematics that look rubbish. If you like this video, remember to go check out other videos that I've made about tools. You can check out this one where I, where I talk about four free AI tools that researchers should definitely know about. Also remember to go check out my playlist where I've collected all of the different videos I've done about AI tools, websites, and more that could help you with your PhD and research. Go check it out because it's a valuable resource that I'm adding to weekly. So there we have it. There's everything you need to know about the websites that could help you with your PhD and research. Let me know in the comments which ones you would add. I'd love to read about them. Also remember there are more ways that you can engage with me. The first way is to sign up to my newsletter. Head over to andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. And when you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I've used, the podcasts I've been on and more. It's exclusive content available for free. So go sign up now and also head over to academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the ultimate academic writing toolkit as well as the PhD survival guide. I've got my PhD application resource pack, the forum, blogs, and everything's growing out there to make sure that academia works for you. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.